Persuadable, what's going on everybody? It's morning time. You guys like my cup? Pretty cool cup. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you a cup. So <laughs> So uh, I hope everybody had a good weekend. The uh, th for those who don't know, I, I went on Twitch for the first time and uh, it was a huge success. And I uh, I had a little bit too much adult apple juice, and so yesterday I was pretty much recovering the whole day. So I had way too much fun, and I need to not do that again. <laughs> I'm getting old. So today we're gonna answer ten questions. Um, before I answer these questions, I do want to let people know that my videos are going to be reduced now. Um, in terms of frequency, I have like a month left, I think, to study for my licensure exam. So I do need to prioritize studying. So a lot of my f f content, etc., I'll be on at nighttime. Um, so my Twitch schedule, including the YouTube videos, will be more catered towards night. Usually probably between 6 and 8 or 8 and 10 Eastern Standard Time. Um, so during the mornings and stuff is when I'm really going to be studying a lot. So I'm not going to be on the game as much. I'm not going to be on Discord. Um, just be a little patient with me. That stuff, you know, you, there are moments in our lives where we have to prioritize things, right? So I need to make sure I prioritize my study. I just did seven years of college, so I got to pass this exam. Okay, so here are the 10 questions. We're going to go through each one. Um, these are just kind of my thoughts and questions that I've been getting throughout the week. Try to update you on what's going on. So first question, what are your thoughts on the perfumer? So perfumer, I really like her. Um... I think that she's a high caliber character and I think a lot of us are really screwing up using her. I think we're messing up quite a bit and uh, sometimes I even show my frustration on the uh, on the camera when I'm live feeding because I'm still trying to get her down. Um, what's happening now or what's been happening is that people when they use perfumer they try to do fancy things with their technique. What that means is, is that instead of cutting like they normally would with a normal character they're trying to do like these fancy things where they're like put my perfume before i climb this window even though this dude's right behind me and i'm going to get terrorist shock when climbing the window so there needs to be i think the perfumer is good um but you need to use her like you would normally be cutting don't try to do anything fancy use her skill as a last ditch effort, just like you would as a magician. I do think that there are certain strengths the magician has that the perfumer does not have. Um, and what that means is that, for instance, um, at Endgame, the illusions from the magician can still vastly help him. Whereas it's a little bit more difficult and situational with the perfumer Endgame because remember, the hunters usually have detention, you're a one shot kill, which means that you can't really afford to take a hit and then use your perfume. Um, I, in certain circumstances, you can where, you know, maybe the, the clown... Actually, the clown was rocket dashing me in one game. He was rocket dashing me. This was, He had detention, right? So detention doesn't work with rocket dash. For those who don't know, detention is, means you're a one-shot kill. But it has to be with a normal attack. It cannot be with a skill. So I had a clown coming after me end game. I put my perfume down. He hits me w with his uh, rocket dash. And I actually used my perfume, but I forgot... <laughs> I forgot about the tension. He, he turns around and just one-shots me, right? So she's going to be very situational. I think she can absolutely be used. Um, she has a lot more versatility with uh, saving. Um, I was able to do some really good things in rank match. Maybe I'll put that gameplay up tomorrow or something. Um, but she requires a lot of skill, patience. Um, one match, I got terror shocked. I got killed within 30 seconds in rank mode. And I kept apologizing to my teammates. So I think she is good, but she's very highly technical. More technical than the magician. Um, so, but we'll see. I think she's going to be a high tier character still. Okay, thoughts on Lucky Guy. Thoughts on Lucky Guy. I see a lot of you guys using them. For the most part, what, we, what I have been doing with Lucky Guy is running a little bit of statistics on um, the variance and, and, and how often, rather, I'm seeing his desired item full. So, um, I only did, I think between eight and 10 matches on custom match. And it seemed like in every single match, I got the first item within the first two chests, um, which was very interesting. So it kind of shows you that, you know, there's, there's a good chance of you getting that item the first time, uh, within the first two chests, but it seems like that significantly drops 
lower than that. So what we have to run statistics on, except I'm super busy, is that if you get your first item, if you start wishing for a different item, is the statistics still as high trying to get that first item in the first two chests? Is it just as high because you change the item? Or is it a static number, which means that just the more chests you open, the less likely you're going to get what you're going to wish for? That's important data. Now, I, I did talk to the devs, right? For those who don't know, I have a direct line with the devs, and they said that they're not telling me. <laughs> um, and, and they have every right not to tell me. They want us to figure it out. Uh, they don't want to just be handing out their personal numbers and stats. So they were really, they were, they were awesome about it. So I, I thank the dev team for getting back to me on that one. Uh, so we'll find out. So really, what it is with the lucky guy is we have to figure out a few things. One, we know that he has a high probability of receiving the item within the first two chests. Not all the time, but it's a high probability, right? So the question is, is that, is it a static number where it doesn't matter what items you're wishing for, the more chests you're using, the less likely you're going to do it? Or is it once you get your first item, it resets? Meaning, if I can get my flare gun in the first two chests, does that mean that I can get my wand in the next two chests? Or does it mean that because I got my first item technically, now every other chest is going to have a reduced probability regardless of the item you're selecting? That's the statistics that I'm running on. They're very separate. They're very different. Um, I do think that... He may go to B, B tier. Uh, I don't think that he's going to be an S or an S, or rather S or an A tier character. Um, I think that he will be a lot more versatile with this buff that he has. Um, but, yeah, we'll keep running the data on that. By, by all means, tell me your thoughts about these characters. Okay, next one. Feaster Rankin. Okay, so Feaster Rankin. I don't know yet. What I am knowing is that if you play Feaster, you need to use Insolence with them all the time, every time. If you're using Feaster and not using Insolence, you're using Feaster incorrectly. So Insolence is going to be on that west wing. And that's so you can really unlock the ability to use your tentacles to hit. So I think Feaster is a good hunter. Um, I don't think he's as good as the Clown or the Geisha. He has no gap closer, at least early game. Um, so I think he's up there. I think he's up there, but he's definitely not a clown. He's definitely not a geisha. He's not as permissible in rank. Um, not in the top tiers, at least. So, And uh, Dancer thoughts. Thoughts on Dancer. For those who don't know, uh, Dancer is a new character that's eventually going to be coming out. And she's got these weird like uh, things about her where she can put two music boxes down. One music box will increase your speed on doing things. Another music box will reduce your or reduce at least the hunter's speed of coming after you. Um, which is very interesting. Um, she also has like this weird ac acrobatic skill where when she drops down, it increase her speed increases for thirty seconds or thirty percent for like four seconds, and then there's like a sixty second cooldown or fifty. It's around that. I don't know it specifically, right? But it's around those numbers. And then um, and then she has a, a really bad buff where uh, she's got two, I think. One, her decoding speeds decrease by fifteen percent. And then for every time somebody dies, there's a stack of slowing her speed or something by 15%. Something, something along those lines. You guys can check out Grizzly's video. <laughs> I don't have it memorized. I just, I just watched it today. And um, my initial thoughts to her is that I'm not going to use her. And you know that my strategy is, is that I don't ever use a character with a debuff to their decode. Ever. I don't do it. I don't use it because it hurts the team. Uh, I mean, if you guys watch my streams, if you watch playing against the top players in the world, uh, you don't got time to have a D debuff to your decode. Um, one of the questions is, well, it can help you survive. Yeah, so it's going to be good for people who may need that extra boost to survive. Um, but for those who, who are pretty good at kiting, um, I, again, if, if the hunter isn't going after you and you have that 15% decode debuff, it's, it still hurts your team. That's just my philosophy as of now. I'm, I know that high tier, um, high tiers over in China, they may play a little bit differently. Um, but over here, you really want to decode as fast as you possibly can. Um, that's, just, that's just my thoughts. That's just how we usually play. Um, but we'll see, right? Maybe there's something I'm missing here. Um, it's way too early, right? So you're asking me for my thoughts, not my analysis. So I can't analyze it until we play with it. All right, so... Uh, we do, I did get asked about 
uh, to update about Anori and what's happened with Anori. And I think this is uh, an important question, actually. So I'm not even going to tell you what, a, what the whole Anori drama is. If you, So, yeah, you should already know that. If you don't, then you can check the old videos out. But long story short, um, at the end of the day, Anori has been pretty awesome. Um, they, they apologized. They, they've stopped the match dodging. They, they took accountability for it. Um, one of the things that I saw, I, I'm actually working on a mechanic guide with an Anori member, uh, Remy, and she provided me a lot of information. She's a very good, uh, she's a very good mechanic player. So one thing that I did see though, is that, uh, sometimes there's Anori members that go in the Facebook, uh, group and they try to help out users, right? And a lot of them have a Nori in their name. And then users start flaming them and saying bad things, stupid things. Like, you know, you're this, you're that. And then they use my videos as a, as a, as a reply when I, you know, showed what was happening. And I want to make you all well aware and well known that if you're harassing or insulting other people, regardless of whether they're an Nori or not, you're not a friend of mine and I don't support you. Um, when we released those videos, it was to show you that there was this problem occurring where me and Legacy and some other high-end users, we couldn't play the game, right, because of what was happening. And we just want to play the game. Now we can play the game. And it stopped. And the development team, actually, I just talked to them this morning as well, or people that I'm connected to with the development team, said that they're looking into that very seriously still. Um... I think that everybody has been pretty much just moving on from it, um, and I think that's the best course of action. Um, but we have the potential of really dictating how the community is, and I think it's important that we all move forward. Um, there are apologies that were said. Um, there's still some of their members who don't like me, and I can understand why. That's totally cool. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the, the, they're not. The, you don't really see the match dodging. You don't see any of that. And I think it's best if we all just, you know, like I said, continue to move on. There's over 250 members in Anori, or 230, and a lot of their names are in Chinese. So if I could have individually read all their names, that probably would have been a better tactic, but I couldn't. So that's why, we, you know, we said this is happening with Anori. Um, but yeah, they've been awesome. They apologize. Their members have been very friendly in the lobby. Um... And to be honest with you, that means that it worked. That's what that means. It means that it worked. It means that everybody is just trying to move on. Um, and like I said, if, if anybody starts insulting Inori or, you know, saying bad things to him in the lobby or... Especially when Inori members are trying to help new players and you have people on Facebook insulting them. I don't support you. I don't agree with you whatsoever. And if anything, you're worse than them. Um, because what they did is they made a mistake, they apologized for it, hopefully it doesn't happen again, um, but it, the, the whole insulting people when they try to help other players in the game, or that, let's not do that, because at that point you prove them right, and you make me look bad, because I just wanted to make this thing well, well aware so we could move on, and so I could play the damn game, now I can play the damn game, they're, they're playing now, you know, so, um, and again, we need to be careful, right? And, and this could have been a mistake on my end. Instead of pointing out the 15 to 20 players who were really responsible for this, it wasn't four. That's ridiculous. But a very subgroup uh, that doesn't represent 230 people. Or rather, if it does, then we got to make a clear distinction. we got to make sure that people aren't bullying people who are Chinese. You gotta, that's, that's stupid. That is so unbelievably dumb. Uh, so, yeah. So, it's time to move on. Uh, if you want to record your gameplay because you're afraid that, you know, match dodge and whatever can occur, I know some people are still saying that's happening. You need to remember that uh, there's still match dodging that occurs in my rank, and it has nothing to do with the Nori. So time to move on. Let's move forward. Let's be adults about this. Um, I really don't want to keep on making videos about all of this. I, I put two videos up. That's it. One about showing you what was happening that hundreds of viewers saw for the past, you know, few weeks. And a response to their apology. Now, this is probably the last time, hopefully, I ever address this, even in a question panel thingy that I'm doing. And that is, let's move on. Um, their members have been incredibly friendly. And, yeah, let's just move forward. <laughs> That's simple. Okay. Twitch schedule and guides. Okay, my Twitch schedule. Most likely, I'm going to be streaming Eastern Standard Time. Probably anywhere between 6 and 10 p.m., 
So um, that's going to be around it. I'm going to get that out there. Most of my YouTube comment is going to directly come from the Twitch feeds because I'm really running out of time. Uh, I got to study, like I said. So, And in terms of guides, I am going to be working on guides. Unfortunately, the guides I've been making, I've been trying to show you ranked gameplay so you can see legitimate play. Um, but I'm realizing that it's taken me 10 times longer doing that when I could just show you in custom match how to do some of the basic things with each character. It doesn't matter if it's regular gameplay or not. It still transfers over. So, yeah, so I am working on guides. I, I, I'm st Perfumer's going to take a while. There's a lot of things I'm doing with her. Uh, but I am going to come out with a mechanic guide relatively soon. Thanks to Remy from Inori who helped me out with that. I just need to get the, uh, the gameplay footage out. Because there is a specific way to play mechanic. Mechanic is an animal. She's such a beast character. And, and it'll, it'll show you why she's an A-plus character once you learn how to play her correctly. Um, oh, I think I forgot to talk about the cowboy. Did I? Yeah, I forgot to talk about the cowboy. So thoughts on the cowboy, same thing. I think he'll be a fun character. I don't think he's going to be anything that I would play top rank or uh, competitively. So that's just my stance with that as well. Uh, I can't really offer you too much with that. You just have to kind of look at the stats and see that uh, it, his stats. I mean, I guess he can go for the rescue, but that's kind of counterintuitive because you have a, a, a coordinator usually to do that. I guess he could be sent as a backup, but at that point you're not decoding, so it could be very situational. Um, regarding help, so yeah, so regarding help, so I got over a hundred, <laughs> I got over a hundred emails when I said I need help, and that's very nice of all of you. And it's definitely going to take me a little bit to get to each one and, and every one of you if I have time to do that, um, especially with the Twitch mob thing. Um, I have my buddy right now, he's my best friend, he's my only moderator on Twitch right now, he's somebody that I've been playing video games with for over 10 years. He's also going through the terms of service, making sure that I don't violate any rules, and um, so I got, I do got help, um, I'm going to have to expand that of course, and the idea is that I want my moderators to essentially be useless, until, unless somebody's coming in there and flaming, and usually that's when I'll say something over the live feed, like mods get rid of them or something like that. Um, in terms of the thumbnails, the editing and all that, I will get to people for sure. Right now, I'm super busy with the studying, so trying to manage all this, and it's kind of hard. Hunter tier list. So the other thing, people are asking for a hunter tier list, and I get that. So here's my problem with the hunter tier list. Um, the Hunter tier list is kind of difficult right now because there's a wide consensus, and this should be common sense, that Geisha and Clown are really the only two characters you'll see in high tier rank. It's the only two that you'll see. Sometimes you'll see some really good Hunters like Eon. Uh, I even saw a DS, a Nori DS, use the Ripper the other day, and you know he was clearly just having fun. But if 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 we were to play them competitively, they wouldn't be using those characters as much. So. Um, Really, it's going to, if you want a, a Hunter tier list, I can make one. But it's going to be more subjective probably than the character one. What I will say is that essentially you're going to have the Clown and you're going to have Geisha pretty much probably around S tier each. Some say the Clown is better than Geisha, and I think that there's a, a good argument to be made about that for sure. Um, so that's something that I have to consider. I like the Geisha. Um... And then you would probably, see this is where it gets challenging. Um, it would probably, I, I will definitely tell you Gamekeeper is the worst hunter in the game. If you don't know why, then then I really do need to make a hunter tier list. Hunt, Gamekeeper is just awful, terrible. Takes him way too long to, to max out his presence to get that one hit kill with his, uh, with his hook. Um, he's got like a 15 second uh, cool down for his hook. It's way too long. Um, his movement speed is reduced when he's throw when he's ready to throw the hook. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, he's he's super easy. The only way that he's gonna get you is if he has blink early game. And at that point, if you're getting killed because of a blink in early game, then really any hunter could have gotten you at that point because he has nothing that's remarkable to help with early game. So, um, yeah, gamekeeper would be last, and then it's really what the the meat is between Hell Ember. Uh, at least Hell Ember has a little bit of versatility in terms of uh, moving around the map, but he's super easy to kite. I'd probably put Ripper up there with the Feaster. And, and just Spider Queen, same thing. She's slow. She's bulky. 
uh, early game, that is. Um, she can set traps up. So that's what I'm saying. It will take a little bit for me to, to, to conceptualize that. And I'm actually going to answer this one last time. And that is, is camping as a hunter a valuable method? I have actually been making a lot of videos on this lately. In fact, I think this may be my fourth video that I talk about this. Yes, stop blaming the hunter for camping. Somebody came into my Twitch feed the other day. It was the first person I had to ban because they were flaming me because I killed somebody in 45 seconds and I secured my kill. All right, Camping is absolutely a valuable trick. Most hunters have builds to kill the coordinator on the rescue as well. And furthermore, when people are using tinnitus, I think that's how you say it, there's an earmark when you're within 36 meters of them. So if I put somebody on the chair and that earmark is up, I'm not going to leave the chair. You're near me. Why would I leave you? And if you're not decoding any of the machines near me, now I know you're just being useless and you're either not going for the rescue and you're hiding. And that's actually a strategic advantage for me. Listen. Do a better job at cutting. Don't go down in the first 70 seconds of the match. Then try to cut as long as you can after that, and you will do okay. All right? Uh, usually, to, and I did this on my Geisha guide, and remember, with my Geisha guide, you can change that persona build to build up the walls, uh, build up the north, confined space to, to stop the anti-looping, of course. All right, so there's flexibility with my, my Geisha guide. But with that being said... You have people who keep saying, why do you camp? Why do you camp? And it's because you don't know how to play the game. That's why. And it's hard to explain this because you won't take two seconds to watch my live feed and watch how top tier hunters play. If they down you early in the match, they are going to make sure they secure the kill. It's that simple. Now, if you're good at kiting and you last a lot longer, that's when you put the hunter at a disadvantage because now they need to make a strategic choice. Do I leave this person because now we're down to two or one ciphers and I can't allow them to keep decoding these machines? Or do I just camp this kill and hopefully kill one more and just settle for the tie, right? Because in top tiers, tie-in, you don't really necessarily lose points. You don't gain a whole crap either, but it's better than losing points. So sometimes hunters, if they have an awful early game, they will start playing to secure the tie instead of securing the win. It's all about a point system, right, based on rank mode. So stop yelling at hunters. Hunters are completely disadvantaged in this game. Get better at cutting. Get better at playing the game. Stop blaming everybody else for you losing or you dying. It's really unattractive. And, and just get better. Stop. Hunters are noobs for camping. No, you're a noob because you died and you allowed that hunter the strategical advantage of camping. If you did a better job, then they really wouldn't have had that ability. So if you had a better coordinator, they would get you and rescue you anyways, even with a camping hunter. That's why you have a flare gun. Your character is literally equipped to be the anti-camping counter to it. That's, that's literally, like, your character is there based on the assumption that a, you have a character that is built under the assumption that somebody is camping somebody. Literally, an entire character, coordinator's character, is completely built to counter this. 